it's Maundy Thursday, it's almost Easter. Uh, it's the day when we remember that Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Now, I don't know who you think are the most important people in Hong Kong uh, at this time. I think you probably think of the doctors and the medics and what they do to fight the virus. If you are one of those, uh, thank you very much. But what do you think of the people cleaning, cleaners? Uh, we know hygiene stops uh, the spread of the virus and everything is being cleaned and disinfected. I was confronted with that a few weeks ago. I went to Festival Walk and as I was going down the escalator, there was this lady in a cleaning uniform just standing there and I wondered, what is she doing? Well, as I passed, I could see she was holding this cloth against the handrail and, and the handrail would just kind of go around and get disinfected. And I first thought, what a terrible job, right, to just stand there disinfecting a handrail. And then after that, I was so thankful, actually. You know, she was doing such an important job. What if there was someone who, uh, <coughs> you know, touched the handrail? How many persons could be infected? How many lives did she save? And yet we see that and we've, well, I don't see many people volunteering, right? They're on unpaid leave, let me go and clean handrails. Uh, the politicians, the directors, they're not doing that. It's, it's beneath them. They would never do that. Well, that's a little bit what Jesus' foot washing was like, right? You think you know the story, uh, John 13, Jesus is the last night, the last supper, and he wants to show the disciples how much he loves them. And so he, he pours water in a bowl and starts washing their feet. Uh, back then, of course, sandals, dirty streets, they need washing, but that's a job for slaves. No one wants to do that. And, and so they're shocked when Jesus goes and washes their feet. Especially Jesus, is, he's not their slave. He's not even their equal, right? He's their master and teacher. And so that's, it's so clear when he, you know, it's so visual as John describes it. Hey? He got up and he took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. You know, how that just looks, how he lays aside his glory and dignity. And you can imagine Peter saying, Lord, you shouldn't wash my feet. You know, that's the right response. And Jesus, he's, he isn't even their master and teacher, right? This is the Lord God Almighty. Can you imagine the ruler of the universe? He comes down to earth and he puts on an apron and starts scrubbing. That is Jesus. And you just see that and you just think, you don't need to do this. I, I don't deserve this. Well, the thing is, we don't deserve it, but we need it. As Jesus says to Peter, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Of course, that's not about the foot washing, right? It's what he would do the next day as he dies a terrible death on the cross, when he suffers the shame and the pain and the curse of the cross in our place, uh, for you, for me, for us, out of love. And again, you feel, I don't deserve this. No, we don't. It is love. It is pure, beautiful, sacrificial love. I hope as a Christian you've been feeling that these days. It's Easter and we can see the extent of Jesus' love. I, I pray it, it changes us. But it only does so when we spend time thinking about it. So can I give you a few suggestions how to make the most of today and these days? Uh, first, just take time to reflect. I'm posting a link for, uh, to a song, just listen and think about Jesus' love on, uh, as he washes their feet. Uh, also tomorrow, Good Friday, uh, watch the service at 10.30, spend the time in meditation and fasting. But what second, how about actual foot washing? Now we can't have a physical service. Can you wash the feet of someone in your household? And you probably never do that, right? Because it's so awkward and, and that's the point. Uh, can you do that maybe with someone who is someone of a lower status than you? Can I challenge you, if you employ a helper, can you try and wash your helper's feet? And you ask her first and she'll probably say, oh no ma'am, you shouldn't wash my feet. Well, that's Peter's response, right? And she shouldn't. <laughs> uh, you, you shouldn't, but that's the whole point, right? It's going to feel very awkward and embarrassing. And when you feel that, you realize more how much Jesus loves you when he died for you. Or, or just, you know, more practically, can you, can you serve someone, love someone? I mean, the foot washing, it shows Jesus' love, but 
there is a greater sign of Jesus' love. And what is that? Well, verse 34, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, Jesus isn't here, but how can we see his love? Well, we can see it when we love each other like Jesus loved us. So, can you love someone? Um, can you do something practical? I mean, that's why it's called Monday First Day. It comes from the word for command, the command to love. I know it's difficult with social distancing, but you know, something that someone needs, something that you feel is beneath you, that you shouldn't do. Can you do that? And that shows, well, it shows Jesus' love to them, to the world, and to you as you realize, wow, this is a little bit of what Jesus did for me. Again, I hope we will want to grasp Jesus' love and that we take time for that. Uh, Jesus wants to transform us as we know him more, as we know his love. Uh, I pray this is a really meaningful Easter for you.